Escondido, California is governed by a mayor and four council members, of whom Olga Diaz is one, the only Hispanic elected here since 1888. She was a business owner with no political aspirations. One day she watched as a group of children marched past her coffee shop towards City Hall. She was curious, and so she followed. That day changed her life, prompting her to run for a city council she felt was unresponsive to the needs of its residents. What made you go into politics if you were a successful businesswoman? I had been here about five years and, and had learned through being in my business what was going on in town and had um, you know, started to, to root in terms of participating in, in different civic organizations and downtown business association and volunteering here and there, um, just sort of out of some instinct of wanting to do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a morning when I was working at my coffee house uh, and um, a group of, of young people, high school students, marched by. In fact, it, it was what some might call a horde of kids. It was a lot of them. And and I didn't know what they were marching for or where they were going. They were carrying flags and they were chanting and I couldn't make out the words. And so as they passed by my store, I felt my heart pound and I thought, I, I have, whatever they're doing, I have, to, I have to follow them. And so uh, I left, I had a, an assistant in the, the coffee house that morning and I said, I'll be back if you can't handle it, just close the door, but I have to go. And, and I followed these kids and I didn't know any of them. And they marched from my coffee house, which is in downtown Escondido, a couple of blocks to City Hall, where we are now. Uh, and I just followed them the whole way. And when they arrived at the corner of, uh, right in front of City Hall, actually, the corner of Broadway and Valley Parkway, um, and it, there were, it was a substantial crowd. Um, and they arrived to City Hall to be greeted by uh, officers in riot gear. Hmm. And uh, I later found out they were not Escondido officers. They were sheriffs, people we had borrowed from the sheriff's department. but. Um, you have a, a, a crowd of high school students greeted by um, officers in full riot gear, and, and these kids, whatever their intention was, was to just get, get attention. And um, I saw a few of them get beaten. Um, there were not many adults uh, looking after them, a couple of people like me that had sort of followed and, mm -hmm. and trying to figure out what it was. And, um, still not knowing what their cause was, I felt that that was wrong. I never wanted to see that. I, ne I never needed to have that experience. And whatever caused it, I was going to make sure it didn't happen again. Mm -hmm. So within days, I found out they were marching because um, in this city, actually, we had a, a council a majority. Which the city of Escondido was the only city in the state of California to pass a resolution to support a state mm -hmm. police that would round up undocumented people. No other city in the, in the state did that. So it failed. And then the next approach within a few months was a rental ban ordinance so that anybody who was going to live in the city needed to first uh, prove their residency status before renting a place to live, house, or an apartment. Mm -hmm. And that caused a lot of turmoil in the Latino community. Um, but that's why the kids were marching and, and they had Mexican flags and they got criticized for the Mexican flags. It turns out they were their soccer flags. <laughs> so that's all the flags they had at the time. So really they needed some guidance. And from the experience of watching these kids get hurt and several rallies similar to that following, um, what, I, what I observed every time was that nobody from City Hall walked out to ask them what was going on. Nobody in a position of authority marched into the crowd and said, okay, why are you here? You know, what happened? What can we do for you? What, what are we not understanding about your cause? Something like that. A complete vacuum of leadership. And so um, after those, those marches, um, the second one especially, that I, I just thought, okay, I have to do something. And, and, and from my coffee shop, I'm thinking, okay, well, who am I going to vote for? I had never paid attention to the, the political structure here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I moved here for the, the downtown and the weather and the housing prices and, and the adventure, but I, I never paid attention to the politics of the city or this region. So um, I couldn't identify a candidate that felt more like I felt. You know, I was, I was looking around and asking around, and there, there wasn't anybody I could really count on winning and sort of displacing this, this um, power trip that the city was on. So I, uh, I came up to this building, actually, and met with the city clerk and picked up an application to run for office. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was going to do it anyway. And I uh, took it home, and it was a lot of paperwork, a lot of reading, and I sat at my kitchen table and filled it out. And when my husband came home from work, I said, honey, we are running for city council. I felt that you know I had, I had moved to this town and invested myself here in, in buying a home and opening a business and, and loving this place as my new home, and I wanted it to be different than I had just observed it could be. I grew up in Northern California, 
and um, had never paid attention to the fact that Southern California, especially San Diego County, was so conservative. Mm -hmm. um, when you see statewide or, or nationwide elections on, on the map on CNN, California always turns blue. And you know, I've been a Democrat since the day I turned 18. I've never apologized for it, even in Escondido. But Escondido has a two to one Republican to Democrat advantage. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I realized I was in a very red district, very conservative. Um, it, I should say what my husband always says to me, the reason I stand out is because I don't fit in, right? <laughs> so I don't fit in here. And I thought, well, that can't be true. And, and you know, right. I, I, can, I can fix this. And maybe that's a, um, some kind of um, a personality quirk, but I, I really believed I could fix it. What are you thinking of doing for the future? Uh, well, I'm halfway through my first term, and the, for the last few years, I feel like you know I've, I've been on a roller coaster. And there's a lot of learning constantly, a lot of learning, which is wonderful. I really appreciate that. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many hours of my life I've spent learning about our infrastructure, our sewer system. Do you know what it takes to flush a toilet? I mean, there's staff and there's you know engineers and chemists and mm -hmm. um, anyway, that kind of material is not the stuff that I thought I was going to be handling. But here I am, and mm -hmm. so um, the challenge is in always doing a good job because the cameras are on, people mm -hmm. are watching, mm -hmm. people write in, they phone in, they come to council meetings and make a point. And so I, I think they haven't worn me out yet. You know, I think halfway through my term, I think I'm ready to, to start running again uh, for a second term. Uh, I've told myself I'm going to self-impose term limits. I'm not going okay. to stay here forever. I'm, I'm going to, you know, if I can get elected a second time, that'll be the last time I run. So everywhere that I go, especially when I'm talking to young people, you know, I, I visit a lot of high school and college classrooms, I'm always looking for my replacement. Good. Because I may be the, the first Latina elected to council, but I certainly don't want to be the last. Exactly. Uh, I think I've set a, an, a, an example mm -hmm. of what it can be like to work in unison with people of diverse viewpoints. And uh, I hope I haven't ruined it for anybody else. You know, I think if, if there's a young person out there interested in running for office um, in, in Escondido, I'd be very proud and very supportive of that. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, I would say that it takes years to get yourself into the loop to know how to approach this mm -hmm. as a process. Thank you, Olga. We will be following you. Much luck in everything you do, and we hope to see many more like you in the years to come. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>